Buckle up for this episode of Loyal TV. We are in Tulsa, Oklahoma on the historic Route 66, fulcrum to the great American road trip. Cyrus was an entrepreneur. Cyrus was a visionary. And at the time, he thinking about what, what could happen in Tulsa, Oklahoma that would be transformative for me, my business, but for our community more than anything. And the national highway system was just really getting started. So he said, hmm, let's see what I can do about this. So he gets himself appointed to the Federal Highway Commission, and he convinces them that that road needs to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you say to yourself, well, why is that? Well, it's a little warmer climate, so my, maybe less winter. But what is really about Tulsa? And it's interesting, it was the old, what we call the old 11th Street Bridge, which is now the Cyrus Avery Memorial Bridge, which was built in 1917. That was the first concrete and steel reinforced bridge built to cross the Arkansas River anywhere in the country. And he convinced the highway department that that would be the safe route to travel to get people from Chicago to Santa Monica. This is why we say Tulsa is where East meets West, and we really claim the capital of Route 66, because had it not been for Avery, had it not been for that bridge, the road would never have come here. It's the Roaring Twenties. You could have any car you wanted as long as it was black. And this road gets started. Times were changing. So we've gone from horse and buggy, and then this newfangled contraption that snorted and choked and, made, and sputtered and made all these noises and scared horses and did all of those things. It's all true. But it's the idea that the, the, the two are coming together and that they're merging here and that there's something good that's going to come from it. We may be scared of each other. We're not sure how this is going to be, but we're here and, and we'll never look back. You go into the 30s, so we have the Dust Bowl. And truly, Route 66 as a migrant road was absolutely critical. And it was this hope that if I travel west, I can find a brighter future. I can escape what's happening here in middle America, the Dust Bowl, the locusts, the, the, the downturn of the economy, and so forth. And that if I go west, my family will have a better chance. We then go into World War II, and so then it really becomes a road for moving troops. And you would see these long convoys of military equipment and men traveling these roads, and people would stop, and almost like form parades as they'd go by and things like that. And then uh, once we get through World War II, uh, that we start, people need a diversion, and they want something else to think about, and the greatness of America. Then we go into the 50s, and the 50s is the heyday of Route 66 because it's, it's women in poodle skirts and it's the mom and pop, uh, who's got the best hamburger, who's got the best milkshake, and people are discovering those. And so all these little businesses are just popping up and down, up and down, up and down, and people are pushing the extremes of, of every little funky thing they can think of to get people to stop at their particular curio shop or their particular uh, hamburger joint. We get into Vietnam, though, and again, it's not so much at that point for troop movement. It is in the mainstay of, of just recreational travel and so forth. But it was escapism, and that's what a lot of the 60s and 70s meant for the road. The cool thing about the nostalgic view of Route 66, but it's really true, you are one with the road. You are in the car. So the windows are down and you hear the birds and you see people and you hear people shouting and you hear all of those experiences that we call noise today. But it's like, no, that was just life. And so I think that's what Route 66 really gives you is the chance to re-embrace life and to appreciate all that's around us and to, to step outside of ourselves and say, well, what's going on here? And, and how am I part of this? And, and how are they part of this? Whoever it is I'm talking to or I'm with. But still, it's those kinds of things. And it's all the road games that we used to do of counting what states are license plates from and how many hawks do you see flying over and, and all of that. When people go and stop and do that, it's like, oh, wow, what have I been missing? But that also, sadly, is also as the interstate system is becoming more and more prevalent because we have larger and larger trucks, larger and larger cars, and people are wanting to go faster and faster to get to places. And the idea is the destination more than the trip. And so then, 1985, we're in the 80s, and it's decommissioned. And so, and, you put, and it was amazing. Once the road was decommissioned, people just sort of like stopped traveling it, and they just moved to the interstates, because, well, that's how you do it. You know, 80% of the mom and pops went away. We lost all of that. So all that small business entrepreneurism was gone. 
Oklahoma has more navigable miles of Route 66 than any of the eight states, 410, that you can actually still stay on it and travel it and go. You can still ride about 85% of the original road today. Tulsa truly wouldn't be what it is today without Route 66. Hotels, motels, um, movie theaters, all of those things got going on Route 66 because people were coming. Tulsa is now having a resurgence of, of economic growth because of Route 66. So what was once made it great is making it great again. And it's this idea of, of always moving forward, always progressing and so forth, that, that, that that's supposed to, uh, to sort of exonerate or to, to lift up and let people think about what was then, what's now, but that we're still always moving forward. And so I'm really hoping with the resurgence that we're seeing now across America with Route 66, that we'll have more time spent on those real experiences, that we'll connect with each other better, communicate better, and understand each other better, which in the complex world in which we live is becoming harder and harder to do. While the routes may have changed, the stories found along our highways and byways continue to be what makes our state great. Join us next week for more Loyal TV.